Hello everybody, Maven here, and I know everybody right now is making videos on like the top builds for Legend Onslaught to get to 50 waves and beat it easily. And uh, typically I don't like to jump on these like trending topics in the Destiny YouTube sphere. Um, but today I thought that I, I just felt like I wanted to do it, you know, cause like I've been doing a lot of Legend Onslaught and I wanted to share my favorite three builds, one for Titan, one for Warlock, one for Hunter, um, for you guys to try out. And I actually already did this video before everyone else. I put it out a couple weeks ago before Into the Light launched. Uh, I did my top three builds, three on Titan, three on Hunter, three on Warlock, on builds to bring into Onslaught. But now that we've actually got some time with Onslaught, um, I wanted to narrow it down and give you guys my favorite three setups. So let's get to it. Hope you enjoy. All right, I'll leave some timestamps down below for Hunter and Warlock if you would like to skip ahead, but we're gonna start here on the Titan. And what we got for Titan today is Strand Titan Syntho-Seps with the Winter Bite Glaive. Yes, you would never think to see a glaive in Legend Onslaught, especially when it gets to the later waves where enemies are like 30 levels above you, but trust me, it works wonders and this was by far the easiest 50 waves i have ever done now some of you guys might mention as the cross just put out a video yesterday on a strand titan winter bite build maven you're stealing content but no i promise you i thought of this build myself and i actually recorded this background gameplay last week before the reset before the modifier because as you know this week there is now a glaive modifier or Onslaught and Glaives are doing 25% more damage. So this build is even stronger than it was in this background gameplay. So the Winter Bite Glaive is, as you know, the heavy exotic Glaive and it does give or take around 50% more base Glaive melee damage than a normal Glaive. And you need to have at least one ammo in the magazine for this to actually work. So try not to ever run yourself out of ammo. Try to always maintain at least one so you can have a powerful Glaive. And when you have this ammo in the magazine, your Glaive hits actually cause slow stacks and then eventually freezing. And the projectile shots from this Glaive as well cause slowing and freezing. So your Glaive alone can deal with overload and unstoppable champions. All you have to do is have something for anti-barrier, which is why I'm using the indebted kindness sidearm in my special slot. And then in my kinetic slot, I have a one-two punch shotgun, the sword breaker, if I need to fly in at a chunky yellow bar. So this glaive is very powerful as it is, but it gets even stronger with the synthoseps because when you get that biotic enhancements buff from being surrounded, which is literally effortless in onslaught mode, you get doubled glaive melee damage. Now, as the Cross's build had Worm God Caress instead, which gives you a much higher damage ceiling potential, but you have to rack up those stacks. And especially in the later waves, that can become an issue. I would say from waves zero to 30, you'll have no problem just literally flying into those spawn zones and just whacking everything. It is extremely effortless and very, very easy to use this build. But when you get around waves 30 to 50, you have to be a little bit more careful just flying into those spawn zones because you're not going to have Banner of War proc'd. I mean, you can proc it pretty easily, but in order to survive pretty easily, you have to have like at least times three banner of war. And the problem with the Worm God Caress in those later waves is that when you fly in there, you're not going to have your stacks of burning fist. But with the Syntho-Seps, you just immediately get that bionic enhancements and get your damage boost. And also not to mention, Syntho-Seps also buff your super damage as well. So in my opinion, the Syntho Steps have a lot more ease of use here. Now, I'm not trying to rag on As the Cross's build or anything. We all love As the Cross. I'm just saying each of these builds have their benefits. Worm God Caress has the higher damage ceiling, but Syntho Steps has the consistency. Now, here's a quick screenshot of my aspects and fragments into the fray, Banner of War, Generation, Ascent, Warding, and Fury. Uh, not too much to talk on here. It's the same setup you would use on a non-glaive Worm God Caress build. And same really goes for the mod setup up here. With this build, you really don't have to stress too much about your mods, your stats, your fragments. The only thing that really matters is Banner of War, Syntho-Seps, and the Winter Bite, and the build basically plays itself. Now, what happens when we get to a boss phase? Well, we're simply just gonna go into our menu, swap over to Solar with Hammer of Soul, put on double sniper rifles and Leviathan's Breath, and you are good to go. Go in there, do not go any further than the beginning cover. Just stay there way in the back and just 
cute with Leviathan's Breath, but remember, save at least a couple shots of Leviathan's Breath so when you swap back to your Winter Bite, you will have an ammo left over, so it will have that supercharged ability when you go back to the waves. But just spam your Sniper. If the boss gets close, just pop your Hammer of Souls, start throwing some hammers, and you should be good to go to really take on any boss. And when you're done, just swap over to your Wave Gear, swap back to Strand, and you are good to go. So if you are somebody who has been struggling to get a 50 wave legend clear, definitely hop on Titan and use this build. Trust me, this was by far the easiest time I've ever had doing legend 50 waves. You can just be up there in the spawn zones just absolutely swarmed with orange bar elites and yellow bar mini bosses and you just do not care whatsoever. You just wail on them all day long. So anyways, I will leave the dim loadout link to this build down below in the description and also the pinned comment if you would like to give it a try. And I will also do the same for the other builds showcased in this video as well. Now moving on to Warlock, and you would expect me to say something very meta like use Phoenix Protocol guys, everyone's doing it. No, we are going to go on Arc and we are going to use Cenotaph Mask along with the Cold Heart. Yes, you heard that right. I did a full video on this build before and I will link it in the little card in the top right corner if you'd like to see this build explained in further detail along with some damage comparisons. Now aside from that video, I have referenced this build in other videos before and whenever I do, I always say that whenever I use it, my mind is always just blown at how strong it is. This build outputs so much damage for whatever reason. And I know I just threw out a shameless plug, but I'm about to throw out another one. I did do a video going over all of the damage values of the exotic tracer rifles. And the Cold Heart, when it's ramped up with its perk, when you hold down the trigger with it, it happens to be the strongest trace rifle in the game by a long shot and does more DPS than heavy machine guns. It hits really, really hard. But the downside of the Cold Heart is that with that 100 round magazine, when you're just holding it down like that, it runs out of ammo pretty quickly. You gotta reload it and then you lose that damage buff from holding down the trigger. But because the Cenotaph Mask has that Actium War Rig perk where it steadily reloads your trace rifle, as you use them, you could take advantage of Cold Heart's ramped up damage for a much longer duration than you normally would. And when you pair that along with the longest winter perk on the Cold Heart that periodically generates Ionic Traces as you hold down that trigger, and you pair that along with Spark of Discharge, the fragment that gives you Ionic Traces for Arc Weapon Final Blows, and you are generating tons of ability energy, meaning you can spam Rifts and Arc Soul, and you can pretty much have an Arc Soul up for you and your entire fire team at all times. So with all these things combined, you are hitting like a truck and you're throwing nades everywhere and jolting everything. And not to mention the Cenotaph Mask is generating tons of heavy ammo for your teammates, so you can just tell them to put on stuff like Dragon's Breath or Gallerhorn and they can take out anything no problem. Now for our aspects and fragments, we got Arc Soul, Electrostatic Mind, Discharge, Shock, Ions, and most importantly, Spark of Amplitude. And the main reason that I feel the ARC subclass is extremely slept on right now is because Spark of Amplitude is just so crazy. It's just rapidly defeating targets while Amplified creates an orb of power. And when you're in an ARC subclass, it's effortless to just be Amplified at all times. And you make so many orbs of power for you and your teammates. So you can take advantage of that in various ways, like getting ability energy back on boot mods, but we're mainly using it to get armor charge. Because if you take a look over at our mod setup here, we are running the good old infinite special setup, which is basically just a copy of charged up on your chest, stacks on stacks on your boots, and special ammo finisher on your class item. So with this setup, with the orbs we're making from Arc Siphon and Spark of Amplitude, we're able to spam special finisher all we want and make infinite special ammo for our cold heart and also for our fire team. And we got some more orb mods on our gloves, got finders, reserve, scavenger, we got Solar Resist if we're going up against Hive, but you want to put on Arc Resist if you're going up against Fallen. Speaking of which, let's take a look at our weapons here. So we got the Fate Bringer, the Cold Heart, of course, and then the Wendigo got double Arc weapons there so we can take advantage of our Arc Reserves and Arc Scavenger. And we are only really pulling out the Fate Bringer to stun an unstoppable champion, and that's it. We're just using Cold Heart basically all the time otherwise. But if you are going up against Fallen, you can take off the Solar Resist and put on Arc Resist, and you can take off the Fate Bringer and instead put on either a sidearm for anti-barrier 
carrier or an auto rifle for overload champions. Now overload champions are not too much of a problem anyways since you do have your pulse grenades that can stun them because we got spark of shock but if you don't have your grenade charge up you could use an auto rifle but barrier champions seem to be the only one problem so I would just put on a sidearm in that slot instead. Now with this build when you come up to a boss encounter as you can see here I just go into my menu and hot swap over to a phoenix protocol build so I can put down a well for the boss because that's very important and then I have the supremacy sniper a scout rifle and of course the leviathan's breath and that is what I recommend and put the well in the safe spot way back behind those panels behind cover and you should be safe there for the entirety of the boss fight. Now I could see the potential of actually running double snipers with the Leviathan's Breath just like I did on Titan because you can save some ammo in your special slot so when the encounter's over and you swap back to Cold Heart you will have some ammo left over. But yeah I don't really have to go in depth about the Phoenix Protocol build literally just throw it on for DPS and take it off after like you really don't have to worry about like mods and fragments or anything. And that's about it for this build. Absolute team player build just infinite ammo for everybody both heavy and special while giving everybody endless arc souls and outputting so much damage you can technically do the same build on solar if you like to place wells but if you're not using phoenix protocols the wells aren't going to be as frequent i think you might as well go arc and just absolutely output tons of damage and jolting and just do a lot better job at ad clear so like i said before dim link down below if you want to try it out and now let's move on to hunter and I know I just did an unconventional build for Titan and Warlock, but Hunter is going to be pretty straightforward. It's just going to be Gear Falcon's Hauberk with the Buried Bloodline. Now third and final shameless plug of the video, I did do a recent build video on this build as well, and I'll link it in the card in the top right corner if you'd like to check it out and see the build explained in much further detail. Now anybody in the right mind is going to tell you that when you're playing Hunter, use Orpheus Rig. And yes, that is a very strong thing to do. You cannot go wrong with that build. I'm not denying that build whatsoever, but I'm just saying that the Gear Falcon's Hauberk with the Buried Bloodline feels like a cheat code. It feels so unfair and hits unbelievably hard. And I went in depth on this on that build video. But the synergy between these two exotics is just unmatched. It is ridiculous. So here's the chain of events that happens. Gear Falcon's Hauberk gives you volatile rounds when you emerge from invis. Echo of Cessation makes defeating that volatile target create a Void Breach. Echo of Starvation will then give you Devour when you pick up that Void Breach. The Buried Bloodline Catalyst says while Devour is active, this weapon will weaken on hit. So you weaken everything for your teammates, making everything pretty easy to shred. And then Stylish Executioner makes you invisible when you defeat a weakened or volatile target, which we're doing both of those things to literally everything we shoot. And since our buried bloodline is weakening everything on hit, Echo of Harvest says defeating a weakened target creates an orb of power and a void breach. So we're making tons of those things. And between those orbs of power and elemental charge, we are getting tons of free armor charge. And looking at our mod setup here, we are utilizing those armor charges for the same reason we are on Warlock, which is spamming special finisher. We got the same setup of charged up stacks on stacks and special ammo finisher so we can have infinite buried bloodline ammo and also infinite special for our fire team as well and because armor charge is so easy to come by we can also use void surge so we get an extra 10 percent damage for our buried bloodline got time dilation for that and powerful attraction to make these orbs very easy to pick up and for the rest of the aspects and fragments I didn't mention yet, there is Vanishing Step and Echo of Obscurity. And for our weapon setup, exactly the same as the Warlock, we are using the Fate Bringer, literally just to stun Unstoppable Champions. Other than that, we're not really using it. And we even got the Solar Resist for the Hive, but if we're going up against Fallen, put on Arc Resist instead, and then run an Auto Rifle to stun Overload Champions. And we really don't have to worry about barriers because there's anti-barrier sidearm and buried bloodline absolutely destroys them. And for our heavy weapon in the background gameplay, you may or may not have been seeing me using the commemoration machine gun because there was the overcharged machine gun modifier, but now there's not. So I'd recommend the Regnant Grenade Launcher. You can even use a rocket launcher if you want to stun overload champions, but just use something void so you can take advantage of your void reserves. And for the boss encounters, same thing as before. Just throw on your sniper rifles, throw on your Leviathan's Breath, stay far back, and you're good to go. Uh, again, I'd probably try out double snipers so I can maintain a little bit of buried bloodline ammo for after the encounter is over, but for now I was using the Doom of Chelch's scout rifle in that slot. 
The boss encounters are really not too much of a worry. It's the waves that you really gotta worry about. But if you did absolutely care about the boss encounters and wanna go the extra mile for it, you can swap over to Lucky Pants with the Warden's Law. So if you had not yet used the Buried Bloodline in the Gear Falcon's Hauberk, you absolutely need to give it a try to really understand its power because it shreds through things, no problem. I haven't felt the need to use Orpheus Rig in lockdown areas with Tether if I can just destroy everything in the area in a matter of seconds and just a few shots with this thing, it really hits that hard. It hits harder than a machine gun at greater distances than a machine gun and weakens everything so your teammates can also do more damage. And with this build, we got infinite ammo for it with our mod setup. So if you're bored of Orpheus Rig, definitely give this one a try. As usual, dim link down below. So that does it for all three builds. Those are my top three builds to use in Legend Onslaught. Now I have one last tip here for those looking to build craft for Legend Onslaught. And I don't mean to cause up a stir in the video because whenever I put out a hot take in a video, people go at me in the comment section relentlessly. So if you're a keyboard warrior out there, get your pitchfork ready because I'm sure you're about to use it. So my hot take is that if you're relying on a primary weapon to carry your ad clear through all 50 waves, I'm sorry, but you are mistaken. Of course, primaries are fine to stun champions, and I guess they're fine if you're weakening targets for Sunbracer so you can proc it easier, and it's fine if you're using Lucky Pants. But other than that, it really doesn't work out. Like, I can see it maybe working if you're using a strong primary like Final Warning or Osteostriga, but even things like Graviton Lance and Sunshot won't carry you in the later waves. Sure, those ad clear weapons will be very, very good in the first half of Legend Onslaught, but not in the back half. They will not hit hard enough. That's how I see a lot of teams flopping for trying to use a legendary primary, even something like a Recluse through all 50 waves. It's just not gonna work. So if you are going to build craft, definitely make a build based around ability spam or utilizing special or heavy weapons because those will definitely actually do something in the later waves. And that is where team comp really comes together because the world record speed run of Legend Onslaught uses two hunters using Xenophage and they have a Xenotaph Warlock to make them heavy so they can basically spam Xenophage throughout the entirety of the 50 waves. But if you're playing with blueberries, you can take advantage of things like Forbearance or Indebted Kindness or stuff like that. So yeah, my advice is do not bring a primary with the intent to add clear with it. Use a primary only to stun a champion and definitely do not run double primaries. That is a big no-no, especially in an activity like this. So that is gonna do it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. If it helped you out, be sure to drop a like and a comment because interacting with the video like that really helps out the algorithm. So it really mean a lot. And if you are new here, please consider subscribing as I am on my way to that big 50K by the end of the year and you can help me get there. And thank you so much if you do. And with that, I will catch you in the next video. See you later.